Hi, this is attorney Nicole Christie from the Christie Law Firm, where we work hard to make families stronger. And so in, a, in this part of our series around domestic violence, I wanna to talk to you about restraining orders and protective orders. I often hear the complaint, it's just a piece of paper. How is this piece of paper going to protect me? It is probably one of the most powerful pieces of paper you will ever have in your arsenal. And so with domestic violence, our laws have been created to make sure that the victim is protected as much as possible. And so these two documents, a restraining order and a protective order, carry with it the weight of the law. And also it is an actual court order and judges do not like when individuals violate their direct order. And so I'll explain to you the difference between the two and the possibilities of having both of them and what happens when a person violates these orders. So a protective order is different from a restraining order in that protective orders are only issued after an individual has been arrested for some crime of domestic violence. It could be as simple as a breach of peace, a disorderly conduct, an assault, or as much as, as serious as an assault with a weapon <clears throat> or an assault that leads to a very serious physical injury. And so you want to keep that in mind so that when a person is arrested, you can be contacted by the advocate, the family violence advocate, who is going to ask you, do you want a restraint, do you want a protective order? And you need to say yes. You want a full no contact protective order. And so the difference between the protectives order, protective orders is that one, there's a full no contact where they don't come near you, they don't speak to you, and they can't speak to other people to speak to you. Then there's a residential stay away where they have to stay away from your home, but they could end up going to your job, they can end up going to your relative's house. So if you don't want them near you at all, ask for the full no contact protective order. And then there is what we call a partial protective order, which means they just can't threaten, harass, or assault you, or stalk you in any way, but they can call you, they can come by your house. And so that's issued by the judge, and it stays intact while the case is pending, and it will only go away after the case is disposed of, after the person is sentenced. If you want something that's going to last longer than the case, you have to ask for a standing criminal protective order. And so that standing criminal protective order, it's also called a standing criminal restraining order, that stays in place for as long as the court orders it. And so what I've done is ask for a hundred years. And so that means that this thing is truly just for a lifetime. And I've asked for those hundred years because there has to be a time period placed in the computer, so you can't just say lifetime. But I've asked for those long standing times because the victim needs to feel protected. The victim needs to know that they don't have to keep coming back and forth to court every time he does something. And then you have the restraining order. Now this is actually issued in the civil court. And here in our state, the exact same parameters exist. You can have a full no contact restraining order, a partial restraining order, or a residential stay away restraining order. And what's interesting is that you can get one, a protective order in criminal court, and then you can also get a restraining order in civil court, all on the same set of facts. And so the importance that I want to illustrate to you is that when an individual has a protective order against them, it is a court order. If they violate that order, the penalty is up to five years in prison for one violation. And so I'll illustrate, and for example, if a person called you five times and there was a full no contact restraining order, each call is worth up to five years in prison. So for calling you five times, they could face up to 25 years in prison. If there is a restraining order at the exact same time, that's another count of uh, violation of a restraining order and that's another five years. So literally, that person for calling you five times could face up to 50 years in prison. And so not to say that they're going to, to jail for 50 years, 
but that's so much leverage that a prosecutor and a judge can use against this person. So if they're not getting it, that you don't want any contact and they keep violating the protective order, a judge will say, okay, since you don't get it, I'm going to help you get it by sentencing you to a period of jail time. So perhaps you can use that jail time to figure out that this woman or this person doesn't want to have any contact with you. So understand that that piece of paper is one of the most powerful pieces of paper you can have. And you need to just exercise your right behind that piece of paper. If he or she shows up to your house and it's a full no contact restraining order or protective order, you don't even have to answer the door. You don't even have to tell them you're violating the protective order. You need to go away. You need not explain a thing. All you have to do is dial 911. When the police arrive on their way, they're probably going to check to see if there is a restraining order or protective order. And the great thing about it is you don't even need to have the piece of paper with you. It's entered into the state system. And no matter where you are in the state, officers have access to it. They will look and see that there is a protective order and that it says no contact and he's standing at your door. There's nothing else that needs to be done. He will be placed under arrest and he will be given a bond. And if he's been doing this often and he's got cases pending against him, that bond is probably going to be high. And especially if you say, he keeps bothering me and I'm afraid, they will place a higher bond on him just because there is a restraining order or a protective order and he's known to violate it. So you don't need to prove anything to him or you don't need to prove anything to the police. Just by virtue of it being ordered by a court, it will be entered into the system and the police will have notice of it and they will take action. So understand the differences between the two, but know that these documents and these court orders are designed to protect victims and they don't need to prove anything other than the person is here and all they have to do is just make the phone call tell the police how this person has violated and it's up to the police to come out and investigate and to make that arrest so if you ever need assistance in trying to understand or get in a restraining order in um, ordered or having a protective order ordered, please don't hesitate to call our office. While we may deal with DCF primarily, and we'll talk about DCF and domestic violence, we do want to help any family dealing with domestic violence because one of the things that I have seen is how it impacts kids and how it helps them or how it hinders them from going up in a very safe, nurturing environment. And so we want to protect kids and we know that the best way to protect kids is to be able to help their parents. So continue to watch our videos and you can also watch other videos that we have regarding DCF and also our other videos regarding domestic violence. So stay tuned for our next video.